If people really could understand that this life of theirs is just a tiny, tiny speck of their eternal life, we wouldn't worry so much about everything, you know, mm. and we wouldn't be scared of this or that. Nash, it's an honor being here with you. Welcome to Wisdom from North. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I want to start with uh, how it all started for you, you, your spiritual journey, because you, you know, as a musician, you delved into this material, this esoteric material, and you kind of seem stop, unstoppable uh, with it. And I'm wondering where it came from. And I understood that you've had a difficult childhood because you were able to perceive things that we didn't, like uh, you saw reality in a completely different way. Can you like explain how it was like being a child? child for you I, it, I didn't have anything to compare with so to me it was just how it was so in the beginning I thought that this was a reality for everybody but soon I discovered that it, that was not the fact so um, yeah of course you get lonely in a certain way that you you have something that you cannot share with everybody so to me, it meant that I, after my little sister died, <clears throat> I was 10 and she was six. That that was really the start when everything exploded, you know, because it, it was such a huge shock when she died. And I think retrospectively, I can see that that was really what started, uh, opened me up on, on a, a level that I was not prepared for something that was supposed to happen to a much older uh, human being, maybe an adult. Mm. If you go a certain path, spiritual path, you evolve naturally and you take step by step. So there's no shock, there's no not. But to me, this was like, boom. And the veil was lifted in a way? Yes, really. So that was the what I had to cope with. And uh, of course, it, you can imagine that makes you a lonely person. So I spent a lot of time for, on my own and I didn't follow school. I, I was just not able to follow school. So You dropped out of school? or Yeah, more or less. I just never turned up. And because they they didn't know, because my sister died, you know, they, they thought that was why I didn't come. Mm -hmm. So they, And they didn't know how to cope with that. So I think that maybe they were just relieved that they haven't didn't have to cope with that. Mm. So, you know. Uh, so in what way did you perceive reality? Was it like you could like read people's minds and you saw things around them? More or less. It was more like that I, I picked up their emotions mm -hmm. and um, I could feel that if people were not honest, like, you know, and I found out that was the most common thing that people really thought one thing, they said another and did a completely different thing. You know, there, there was not alignment between what people felt and what they thought, what they said and what they did. And that was really scary. That was a, the scary part because it made me very, very uncertain on many things. I had to find new rules. In the beginning, you know, you know, when we are kids, we just watched uh, Walt Disney. And we, when people are smiling, we suppose they are happy, you know. But when they are smiling, and you can feel that that's not the case, you, you wonder, why are they smiling? Mm -hmm. And when why they are feeling sad, and why are they saying this when they really feel like that? So that was something I had to cope with. And really, when I was 15 years old, I was just such a bad state. that. Um, and then I received a little book by uh, Anonymous Post. I don't know to this day who sent that book to me. Yeah, that's amazing. Someone sent you a book <laughs> and you don't even know now who it is? No, I just think it's things like that that happened when we, we really needed and I was really I was really bad. I was really in a bad shape. And I think when you're in a bad shape and you have something that you are here for, you get help. I mean, everybody gets help all the time. We are just not acknowledging. Uh, so I think that was, you know, just something that 
Should so be. what kind of book was it? Was it knowledge? Yeah, uh, it was a Sufi master called Hasrat Inayat Khan. And that book really saved my life. I opened it at randomly, and the first thing I, I read was something like that. If you will approach us, we will bow down and lift you up. And to me, that was the angels uh, just inviting me to raise myself upwards instead of always going, because I was on a, on a slide downwards mm. because of, you know, my... So uh, that was really the start of it, and I, I started to, to, to read a lot of books. I read and read and read all that I could get hold of. And of course, in, in 1964, there wasn't so many spiritual books as we have today. And a lot of the books that, you, I mean, today you can, you can go to any library and almost get ev anything you want if you know what to look for. But remember, at, at, in those days, there was books only for the initiated, for secret books, you know. But even the secret books are available, available for everybody now. Mm -hmm. So I started really on this journey and reading, reading, reading. I also learned myself English that way because in, I, I didn't get it in school. So I just got an English book, started reading it without knowing anything, and I learned English in that way. Mm -hmm. Just reading, 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 reading. But then uh, you started as a musician, but then you had three years where you were very, very ill. Yeah, that was much later. That was in, uh, in uh, 1995. Um, I was living on, an, on the island just outside here in the fjord. And um, suddenly I was stuck with this illness and I lay in bed for three years and... Uh, Really, that was the great initiation, I think, because uh, in the beginning, I just didn't know what, why I was lying there. I, I really prayed, you know, every day to God and asked, tell me what I've done wrong so I can make it up to you. And if you can get me out of this, I'll be the best boy on the world. You know, I will never smoke. I will never go with the girls. I will never <laughs> drink. I will never do anything. But nothing happened, really. After three years, suddenly one day, it was like grace was coming in to the picture. And there was a, I got an option. And the option was, if you are lying there and you feel so much pain, why don't you take upon you the pain of the world, of other people? Because if you can do that, you will not lie there in vain. There will be a purpose for you lying there. And I just agreed. And you know, the, the magic thing was, the moment I said yes to this, mm -hmm. my, the pain went away. And a week later, I was connected to the seer. So I think there's really, when we understand that there is a purpose when you are hit with illness or pain or whatever you go through, hard times, it's really a gift from heaven. And if you can take it upon you, and excuse me, it, this is no comparison or whatever, but I think that's what Jesus really wanted to tell us. It's nothing to do with him taking upon him our sins or anything crazy like that. No, it's more like he said, if you know what pain is, that there's a reason why you have to endure pain then you can you can kind of um what do you call it you get translated you know you and i are here to be translated we are translated from physical to spirit we have to understand that we are, this body and this body is just something we have for a limited time temporary yeah and after that time is over, we leave it behind and we travel. If people really could understand that this life of theirs is just a tiny, tiny speck of their eternal life. It's just like, you know, we wouldn't worry so much about everything, you know, mm -hmm. and we wouldn't be scared of this or that. But just remember, every 
second, somebody is leaving this place. And tell you what, the, the, the wild thing about it is that you and I also have to leave this place. And nobody is talking about it. Nobody yeah. dares to talk about it. That's the only thing that you can know for sure. We have to leave. Yeah. So yeah. that makes a huge difference when you start uh, working in that direction and try to to incorporate that in your life, that you are mortal when you are here, but on a, another label, you are forever. So uh, this, uh, th was it a voice that you heard inside of you about the pain? Or did you just, was it a knowing? It was a knowing. It was just something that made itself manifest at the time. Okay. Just like, whew, okay, here's your option. Now, this is the last thing you will get, the last chance you'll get, because I just couldn't hear, I couldn't see. And that's another thing, when we are sick or we, we are we are. We, we are not in pain or something. We are so much, we are so centered in ourself in a diff, in, in a wrong way. We are on the ego part. Yeah, so in the pain, so... You, yes, we're yeah. so much caught up by it that we don't see the real thing and we don't hear, you know, and we don't see or hear the help that surrounds us. So this was kind of, okay, this guy is obviously very very you know slow <laughs> so now we'll get him the 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 big package and if he if he, he can understand and see that we have to give him up so that was really the feeling also okay. this is the last chance and i have to understand okay i was prepared to take upon me the pain of the world forever huh. that means that I tried anything, everything else. Oh. This was the last thing. And the minute I said yes to that, the pain stopped. And I was relieved. And a week later, the seer came. Yes. So that was the, me saying yes to the next step. Mm. And I think that's something we everybody have to to uh, to think about. That we that if you don't say yes to, to the next step, it, it won't occur. You know, you'll just get stuck there and that was it. I translate it into also uh, that you surrender in a way. Yes, of course. Yeah. You surrender. Uh, and I heard that again and again. There's something magical that happens when you surrender. Mm -hmm. Letting go of the control, it has yeah. to be like this, you know. Exactly. But I want to speak about the seer because you met this man that just mm. came along and changed your life. Mm. Yeah. What do you want to know about it? Oh, I want to know the journey. Like he, uh, somebody told you to call him, mm -hmm. and you did. Yeah, yeah. And um, after a few calls, I, uh, one day he was just there, and uh, he said, "What can I help you with?" And I told him, "I have to, you, 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 I want an uh, appointment with you in your office." And he said no way there's we have almost a year before you can see me I said then i'll die you have to to really help me and i told him all, uh, all about what was wrong and he said all right hang on and one minute later he came back he said okay you'll see me half a, in a half a year and until then everything will be all right bye <laughs> and from that moment i was up And every day was like coming back to life slowly, slowly, slowly. And there were so many crazy things happening. I gave up smoking, which I have tried so many times without luck. It was like... So I have to ask you, what, who is this man? Like, is he well known? Is he uh, hiding somewhere? Is he a healer? Do you think he's a, a, an angel or someone with, you know, these abilities that are, uh, that he is born with? I'm just curious, curious he, about that man. He was he was born with, with all those uh, abilities, but he was, of course, just a man like you and me. And there was a purpose that I had to meet him because we, we were meant to meet. And uh, he helped me a lot, but I also helped him a lot. So we really had something to give each other, and we were much like uh, father and son, and we became very, very close friends. 
And um, until he died in 2007, we were very close. We talked every day. But the funny thing is that um, he, he was he was born in Aarhus, like I, in the same street, in each <laughs> end of the street. Yes, that's oh, it's really synchronicity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was, but he was uh, um, he was what you call call a cosmopolitan. He was a man of the world. He worked all over Europe, and uh, he had customers all over the world who phoned him every day and he lived in in southern spain in andalusia where he had his uh, home and his office and you went with him abroad i think was it in france yes yes we we worked a lot in france but also in spain yeah. yes and then you wrote the o manuscript mm -hmm. and to me it seems like you felt that this was um always meant to be in a way yeah You could say that. I, that. That was what I felt. And when I started writing it, the seer was like me, like my, um, what do you call it? I've, I've wrote a lot of, a, f a few books before that. But the seer was really my kind, if you could say, my apprenticeship, mm -hmm. you know? And after that, a real strange thing's happening. The Mary Magdalene book and the Grail book was like, you know, there was written under the, the most crazy circumstances. I got divorced. I was not, I was living in a car, you know, and I just wrote those books. And I never thought that they could become books. And even to those days, to this day, when I open it, and and I just open it randomly and, and read something in Grail or, or Mary Magdalene, I, I wonder where it come from. I don't remember me writing it. A lot of the things there. So it kind of came through you, you felt like? Say that. I'm not uh, keen on mentioning channeling or stuff like that. But yes, something like it. Oh. Yeah. So what I'm curious about is that you've written about, you know, Mary Magdalene and Jesus and that time. And uh, you've gone into metaphysics. Uh, do you look, okay, why this interest towards Christianity in a way? Uh, or is it more that you're looking into the esoteric side of it and not as much as the traditional mm. Christianity? It is because there is a secret uh, part to it. You know, I, I started working with the Mary Magdalene already in the 80s. So that was long before the Da Vinci Code and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But the, I think the main thing for me that really made a huge difference was when I started learning Uh, Aramaic, right. and Aramaic is the key to understanding Jesus and Mary Magdalene. And you, I mean, it's so hard to to explain in words what that means, because any, I mean, any literature you can you can think of, just become a common noise from a marketplace compared to what the Aramaic language really, really are capable of opening. Aramaic understood in an esoteric way, on a, in a mystical way, is really one of the deepest uh, spiritual path you can you can walk. It's really, really amazing. And every day, you know, I started in 1988, and every day since is like a flower that just keep opening up, blossoming, opening up, opening up more petals, more petals. And it it have made me understand, you know, so many things, the most simple things, the most complicated things in a simple way, and the most simple way in a very deep, deep, deep way. Yeah, because you're saying it's kind of a, a psychological language and a more feminine language than, for yes. instance, Latin. It is, it really is. And um, you, you should remember one word Uh, can have up to 10 different meanings and they can be contradictory but they have to, to you have to include them all and you have to understand and that is really something that's very hard for us in the west to understand how do you comprehend 10 different meanings mm. in the same time at, at one that means also why it has been so difficult to to um, uh, translate jesus words into Greek, because 
how could you just with one word yeah translate i mean we you have haven't got words for for the aramaic words you have to use something remember for each letter in that language there are written books just for one letter <laughs> you know like uh-huh. yeah yeah and they spoke aramaic jesus and mary when they were yeah, okay exactly yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm very curious about this. The mystery schools, the esoteric schools. Can you tell us a little bit what you know about that? Because apparently I have understand, stood that both Mary and Jesus went to these schools mm-hmm. and really learned about the mysteries of the universe, you know, astrology and all that. Mm, of course they did. And uh, I mean, if if you're really studying these things, it's... Um, if if you get rid of all the theology of the churches because they are really the stamp, stumbling stones for this you know because they are standing in the way of the the real truth about this okay. jesus he was uh, educated by the essenes at the dead sea mary the magdalene was educated by the therapists in alexandria just outside alexandria in northern egypt and that was a mystery school where both men and women went in on an equal footing and uh, they learned everything about astrology astronomy stones and crystals healing about the human condition on all levels not only physical and psychology but also on a spiritual level so they were very very revered healers exactly as the essenes were in in uh, in israel so um when you went into to g- get this education this was really a holistic education you know it was not just like today you if you're a doctor you are a e- doctor for the ear or the nose or whatever no they they knew the whole picture and that's exactly what we need to come back to in order to understand who are a human being mm-hmm. who are we where do we come from what are we doing here where are we going i mean, those four questions, we have to uh, answer them and go to a doctor and ask those questions. Mm. And they w- don't know what they will tell you. And of course, it's not to 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 say anything bad about doctors, but that's just the difference. Yeah. And that's what where we, where we have come to, yeah. you know. So is this the same schools as the Aristoteles and Pythagoras went to? No, they were different. They were uh, quite different. Those schools were much more into to the spiritual, okay. to the deep spiritual things. They knew that everything was everything was uh, was spirit, even the stones and the sand and you know the trees and. And Jesus went out to the desert for forty days, didn't he? And met kind of his uh, ego. And what I found very interesting was that in Aramaic, the word uh, Satan means ego. It's is it, it means really the um, adversary, the, the 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 you know our own mischiefs, uh, everything that you you are up against within yourself mm-hmm. is really Satan. Satan is. In that respect, the ego, the the small self, you know. So Jesus had to meet his own ego as a part of the practice. Everybody has. That's something, and uh, unfortunately, a lot of people in 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 uh, new age and so forth, they don't want to confront themselves. They they want to live up there, you know, with the angels and uh, the pink on the pink sky, you know, listening to very spiritual music. But you should remember that walking a spiritual path is really to be grounded. Mm. And if you're not grounded, I mean, you must remember and ask yourself the question, why am I here? In a human body. It's because we have to work here. And that's we have to develop heaven on earth. Mm. And you cannot do that if you're up in heaven. You have to go down there and really open it up here. 
so you've also said that uh, probably Mary and Jesus were married, but that's not the most interesting part. The interesting part is what they represent that mm. we've kind of misunderstood. Can you talk a little bit about how we kind of misunderstood the real message? Yeah, there's so much to it because first of all, being man and wife, even to this day, if you go into the the Orthodox Judaism, you will hear the rabbi every Sabbath. He will he will ask his uh, the members, his the married couples, to go into the bridal chamber and unite, because when they are doing it, this in love go in and, and, and unite in the in the bridal chamber. They are they are manifesting the Shekinah and the Shekinah is the feminine part of God. So you should know that when we go into the bridal chamber as man and wife, it's not just to to um, to scratch the itching, you know, the sexual thing, but it it, it has a spiritual uh, side to it that we have completely forgotten and you have to understand the Aramaic language when you read the New Testament to understand that that what Jesus is talking about in the New Testament in so many places where without the Aramaic understanding we don't not know nothing about what what this is all about mm -hmm. so he they are also all about what is the sexual the eros what is that representing and that represents a spiritual path that only a man and woman can, can, can go together. And they must understand that if they enter the bridal chamber in e on equal footing and equal respect, they don't have to understand each other, but they have to respect each other, mm -hmm. despite whatever they cannot understand with the other part. Because they are like yin and yang, sun and moon, and without without the other, the the other the, the the other one is just a half of the whole thing, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's the most important thing about Mary Magdalene and Jesus is that they represent possibilities that man and woman can can. But we have to understand, and we are just starting to to understand it now. Mm -hmm. But it will probably takes takes us a lot of. Uh, uh, a lot of time before we really understand it on a on a deeper level. So how can we uh, make way for the new uh, divine feminine? Because Mary, you know, she was also just taken away in the Bible. It seems like that they decided. I think uh, Pope Gregor decided in, I think, five hundred after um, Christ died, that. Um, these different Marys were the same Mary, and she was a prostitute. But that that wasn't so at all. No, no, that was just. I mean, the, the prostitute thing appeared because they, they didn't understand the Aramaic, and that's one of the. In re, in reality, the word that was translated as practice, prostitute meant moon priestess. A moon priestess, and that was exactly what what, what Mary the Magdalene was was educated to be a moon priestess, and that means that she holded the she could hold the office of the 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 feminine on a high level, and Magdalene is really her her in what do you call it her initiation name, Mary. Miriam, the exalted one, she was above, and she, she, when you are above everything, when you are exalted, you, you, you can see uh, through everything, you can look down and see how things are connected. When you're down there, you can see nothing, but she was the exalted one. She was on the highest level, you know, and um, when she, uh, uh, she was, uh, what do you call it, oh, doing the oil thing on Jesus, what do you call it, a anointed. Mm -hmm. When she anointed Jesus with the, the holy oil, he said in the New Testament, for this she must be remembered forever. It's, then in, the, it's in the New Testament. F for what she did today, she must be remembered forever. 
And that means that by doing what she did, anointing Jesus, she really showed who she was. Because only one on equal footing with Jesus were allowed it to, to anoint him. So that meant if he was a prostitute, he must have been a thief. <laughs> But he was, we can we can read that he was Jesus the Nazarene, mm -hmm. Jesus the initiated one, the one who knew. Yes. Mm -hmm. So she was Mary the Magdalene, mm -hmm. the exalted one. And they were both equal, right? Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. yes. So, so um, how can we um, embrace the divine feminine today? And what is feminine energy to you? I mean, a lot of people think that really it's a, the, 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 the equal respect of both the masculine and feminine coming together as one. That is the new feminine. Yeah, right. So it's not about the feminine coming and the masculine going away. It's about yeah. the both uh, joining, right. joining the two together. And that exactly what Mary Magdalene is exponent of that she can be. And really the modern woman in many ways are, are, are inheriting now that she can be just both a mother and she can have a career and she can, I mean, to be um to to uh, combine the masculine clear thought mm -hmm. and the feminine heart that can be um, compassionate combine combining these two in the in the bridal chamber mm -hmm. that is really it mm -hmm. that's the new feminine mm -hmm. as i see it interesting <laughs> What do you think is happening around the world? Do you think we are in a shift right now, like spiritually and um, consciously? We are. We have always been in a shift. I mean, this is the whole whole trip on Earth for humans is just one step after the other. Unfortunately, we are just not aware of it. We we are just thinking that okay, this we are here and. Uh, Let's get the best out of it, uh, and that means how much can I get? <laughs> you know. Thanks. So we 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 slowly more and more people understand that we are here together, and that's really the key to this. And if we know that your luck is also my luck, and your misfortune is also a little bit my misfortune. We start, we, we, we understand that some people are born to stand up and be, you know, on television, for example. Other people are meant to be more invisible, mm. but do their work where they are supposed to do them. But We we tend to to look at other people all the time instead of looking at ourselves and say, oh look at her, she's always in the, she's always the one who get all the attention, and we shouldn't be so. Um, I mean, this is just a tiny speck of a long, long, long travel, and tomorrow it's your turn to stand up and talk about this or whatever you are into, but we have to prepare for what we are here for. And we have to understand that if I'm here to be a healer, and I'm not, maybe not uh, here to to speak to a lot of people about what I'm doing. I'm here to heal people or whatever. So you think there's a destiny? We have yes, a purpose. Yes, yes. And we have, Each soul. Has yes, a yes. And uh, I mean, if we could just f be, what do you call it? If we could just be, rest with that, you know. And be peaceful with, okay, that's what I'm supposed to do. Then everything will open up. And you'll never, never, ever need anything. The moment you understand why you're here, everything will come to you, what you need. You do, I mean, you, you won't be so so um, so uh, scared to lose what you, you get. You know, remember what it said in the New Testament. F for a person who don't understand this, will lose even that little that that he 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 got you know
Yeah, that sounds scary to me. <laughs> yeah, but it's just, if you really understand what's being said, is exactly, give it up. Huh. Surrender to your purpose, and you'll get everything. Don't fight to be so concerned about getting things. You get exactly what you need at the right moments. Every and it, I, I mean, <laughs> the, um, that's you're positive about this. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. But finding your purpose, do you do that through your heart, or do you have to actually live through the pain, through the difficulties, to find your purpose? A lot of people will have to do that because uh, you can always ask yourself, what do you really want to do? It's that simple. Yeah, what do we want to do? Because it's in there somewhere. What are you good at? Yeah, I'm a good, I can draw very good. But why don't you use that? It's gift. Mm. So you can always try and find out that. But a lot of people are, are living by norms of this society that is completely crazy. No, no, you can't do that. You must do this because everybody expects you to do this. And now you're married, you cannot do this and you cannot do that. I mean, what is that? Mm. You cannot travel with a, if you're just born a, a, a child, you cannot go to the Far East. Why not? What, what is that? Uh, I've met people who have been working, young couples have been working with small children, you know, in Syria and before the war, of course. But it's just... You know, there's so many crazy norms that tell you what you cannot do and what you must do. and mm -hmm. So everybody is good, more and more conformed to laws and rules that just divide you from your path, mm -hmm. you know. So you should really, it's much better to ask yourself, what do I, I want to do? What do I think, I, where can I benefit and where can I give the most? Mm -hmm. That's really... So lastly, where do you think we're going? Like, what's the purpose of us being here? Uh, do you think we are uh, all connected, like all one, and we're moving towards like becoming spiritual beings? Or like, why are we here on Earth in the first place? You know, doing these missions, why? Oh, it's a big question. I know, I just want to hear from you yeah, yeah. because I'm excited. It's, it's really, really, there's something I, really cannot go into because I think a lot of people will misunderstand it if I, if I said it. But we are definitely not just one because there are certain souls here who are here for a certain purpose and some of them are not just, you know, good ones, if you could say that. So we're uh, not all connected? Yes, we are. But there is, you know, my father's kingdom have many mansions, you know, there's many levels. And, you know, when you go into all the, the hell stuff and all the yeah. uh, description of hell and purgatory and stuff like that, of course, it's very scary, but they are really trying to tell you that there are planes where we are being where we are being cleansed you know and we have to if it 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 um, is that in the astral you mean in other dimensions yes, yes, yes. okay but also on earth oh there are people here who have to go through certain things and there are people here who Oh, it's very hard to 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 go into because it 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 because it will just scare the he shit out of uh, many people. But we shouldn't really be scared of it. But it, on the overall uh, picture is that we are here and we are connected, and we have to find out. We have to help each other in order to reach our common goal to make this a better place. Hmm. So that's the <laughs> main thing about it. Oh, maybe you'll write a book about it once and yeah, I can read more about Well, thank you so much. All right, thank you. Is there anything you want to say in the end? Something? No, you have a beautiful, um, um, this what is, is it called? Jerusalem cross. Oh. Um, it's Jordan. Jordan. Yeah. It's, yeah. 
I really love it. It's just yeah. something I bought it many, many years ago, and it's been with me ever since. So if there's one thing, one last thing we can hear from Lashmul today, what would it be? <laughs> An advice or something? Oh, all the things we are talk- have talked about today. I think read read my books because it's all in there. And if you really want to go to the depth of it, you have to read the books. Mm. I think that's it. Thank you so much and have Thank a you. beautiful vacation. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>